Hello. <laughs> oh, sweet baby. Aww. To be honest, I actually filmed this video twice in daytime. I realized that I talked a lot about just like having Ume, but I didn't talk about like any advice to be honest it's also because i did my hair and makeup today and i was like i just want to film while i have the hair and makeup i don't want to like get ready again to film a video when i'm already in a way ready so this is the vibe i have my cat her name is ume she is two years old and she's a classic tabby cat ume stands for it's like a small plum in Japanese and sometimes I call her Ume, I call her Umi, I call her pretty girl, I call her baby, rat, um, and she is... oh okay bye. I love her to death. Ah she's running away from me. <laughs> to be honest I just wanted a companion and I live in New York and having a dog is way too much for me like the amount of maintenance and the amount of time and effort i would need to pour out on a dog is way too much for what i was going on in my life the progression of thought was cats and the thing is i never grew up with cats i didn't know anyone with cats so i just like knew the stereotypes like i knew that cats were more independent they were a little bit colder they are harder to train um just like all the negative connotations of what you think a cat is that's all i knew which is interesting of like how i even wanted a cat with knowing all these negative connotations and i don't know i was just curious i was just like i honestly like don't know enough about cats so why don't i just do my own research and see if it's even for me you know like once you start looking up something your algorithm picks it up and just overwhelms you with that one topic that was me with the cats I was just doing like basic research of like what it's like to have a cat pros and cons and then all over my Instagram and TikTok I started getting cat videos and they are just so funny and so cute and so loving and it's just such a joy like I had a great time watching these videos and I think it gave me kind of like refreshed my mind of what cats are you know I was kind of I honestly was going to hold off until I got married but then I was talking to a friend and she was like well can you financially afford all the things the cat would need are you mentally ready and I was like yeah I'm ready I'm just waiting till I get married and she was like well like if that's the only blocker like why is it is that big enough to stop you from adopting that conversation made me rethink of why i was waiting and if i want it i should get it uh, and i was very much emotionally ready to adopt i was ready to have a companion and i had the money to take care of her so i was like you know what i'll like I'll seriously think about it and literally that night I started going on pet finder and looking up cats to adopt my application process was kind of rough the first thing I feel like any new and interested person who doesn't really know the process of adopting goes to pet finder which is me I just applied to a bunch of cats I think I applied to maybe like 10 to 15 cats and I got zero applications moving forward. I actually got a call with one of the shelters and she was very honest with me, which was very good. She was explaining to me how it was unrealistic for people to pick me because of my living situations and because I have three other roommates. And I think there's been many situations where a person who adopts has a bunch of roommates and what ends up happening is that roommate 
taking care of the cat instead of the person who adopted and it becomes like neglected or it goes back to the shelter and stuff like that so these people are doing the best that they can to find the best owners for these cats so i understand that like they're just making sure that the cat gets the best home but i'm also like i will never abandon the pet that i pick like i would never but they don't know that but i know that and she was also saying you know i'm very young i probably have a lifestyle of like going out often and stuff and it's just not the most attractive application for um, shelters to match cats with and I get it I really do I get it but I still wanted the cat so I started looking into places like PetSmart kind of places that like put in an application you have the pet kind of places so uh, PetSmart is a great example of what I'm trying to portray I went to a place called best friend animal society and it's only because they have a website where they show pictures of the cats that's in their shelters at the moment and i feel like a lot of places like PetSmart, it's kind of like you go in and you just see what's there like there's no online viewing of the cats or there's no images of the cats and you don't really know anything before you go so that's why i like best friend a lot because it showed a photo of the cats and it showed like a very brief description because again the cats come in and out so often so they don't have enough time to fully understand the cats so while i was searching for cats these were my criteria. i wanted a cat around one years old and i wanted a calico cat or like an orange and white cat and i also wanted a girl those are the three things three to four things i was looking for but it was it was very i was very flexible in terms of the color and the pattern of a cat i don't think it's like a deal breaker if the cat's not a calico or orange cat obviously my cat is a tabby so it's like the most basic breed of a cat the color was just like aesthetically like this is what i would like but if it doesn't work out like it it's not a big deal when i went to best friend's website there was actually a black and white cat that i saw and i thought it was so cute and the description was saying how this cat is super loving it loves people it loves cuddling and i really like that that was music to my ears they also put in a note that said that cat specifically does love biting love nipping um essentially it's like when that cat is overstimulated it'll just like reactively kind of nip your hand they said that it doesn't hurt it's just like a it's like a like a little gentle like squeeze or something i don't know but i was like let me just go see this cat so i went i went to see this black and white cat the cat was so cute it was so lovely but i i see i saw the cat try to like bite me and it kind of scared me and that day i was looking at other cats there was around four kind of like walking around and then the rest were in their like little cages so actually i was able to look at those cats and there was ume and there was this calico cat <laughs> and i was like freaking out about this calico cat because it was like within the criteria it was around a year old it was a calico and it was a girl and i was like oh perfect perfect right but the thing is the night before i came in that calico cat came in so they have no idea how healthy she is they don't know her personality like not even a general it is because it was only a night that they got the cat so if i were to adopt the calico it was my own risk and i did not want a medically high maintenance cat to be honest although i was ready to own a cat i wasn't ready to own a sick cat if that makes sense and i know it sounds really cruel and it sounds really mean but i'm also like I'm being really honest i'm so sorry i just wanted a healthy cat so if i were to adopt this calico cat that cat's health was based on my risk right and i didn't want to be in a position to return the cat the guilt the sadness the grief would eat me up if i had to like pick a cat and then return it a few days later like i don't i would not feel okay about it so i didn't want to risk anything and then i saw ume and ume i said that she's basic tabby cat but then for some reason i thought she looked so cute i thought her fur color was very interesting it has like hints of orange in it actually and then at that time also she was meowing a lot and i was like that is so cute so I literally then and there i was like you know what? i'll just get this cat 
this cat right here. I was so shocked how easy it was. I honestly, I thought I would have to come back with like a carrier or something, but she was like, no, here's a cardboard box that you can take her. And I was like, oh, okay, great. So my girl was $95, so freaking cheap. I thought she would be like $150 through $300. I thought that was like the average cat range. But I was so surprised that it was so cheap. <laughs> So prior to getting May, I bought necessities. I bought a cat treat, a scratching post, a litter box, a food bowl, and a water fountain. I didn't buy food yet. I read that cats have sensitive digestive systems and a sudden change to food can cause vomiting, which who would want that? Not me. The shelter actually gave me the food dry food and wet food that they were already feeding her so i just kind of went out and bought the same thing the same day i got a bunch of treats i got a bunch of toys i think when you have a cat especially when you first bring a cat in you just can't expect your cats to like what you choose just because cats have their own preferences so i got ume both a vertical scratching post and a horizontal scratching post because i just didn't know which one she would like more and the funny thing is she actually loved the horizontal one in the beginning and now she only likes the vertical one so they kind of change all the time so i just kind of like want to over prepare so that she has everything comfortably and like this also applies to toys and bed and even food to be honest so with toys i bought a bunch of toys i just i didn't know what she would like i got toys that she can play on her own i got toys that's on a stick i got the laser i found out that she loves toys that she can play on her own she doesn't like the stick she doesn't like the laser and then i bought her a bunch of these toys and she ends up loving a bottle cap like the bottle cap was her favorite toy in the world i was just like why did i even bother you know what whatever and then even for a cap bed like i did buy one and she used it in the beginning but she doesn't use it that much now and i've had this bed for like the for two, for two years. Did I even mention that I've had Ume for two years? Sorry. Ume is four years old. I got her when she was two. Oh, oh dang. Hold on. Wow, I'm sleepy. I experimented a lot with, or not a lot. I experimented with what kind of wet food and dry food. And oh, also Ume's, before I even adopted her, she was a stray. So she kind of has like stray tendencies. I will explain more about this later. So I don't think she's very picky in what kind of food she eats because she is happy to get whatever she can get but at the same time like i want to give her good food you know so i did research a lot and i think i started with the basic wellness wet food and the science hill dry food or like something else but now i still have the science hill dry food but i'm transitioning her to open farms and our wet food is now smalls She has a pretty good diet and uh, she loves her food. She eats them very well. She still does. And I think it helps that, especially with her wet food, I change the main protein all the time. So sometimes she gets turkey, sometimes she gets chicken, sometimes she gets cow. And her dry food is always like a chicken and turkey mix. But like, you know, it's there's diversity. So yeah, like just know that when you get a cat just like have the basic necessities but understand that it's going to change and as you learn more about your cat the more you'll understand what it likes what it doesn't like and you'll adjust your things and your cat's things to what your cat actually likes to use like also another example is my cat's carrier I have three carriers. I have a backpack, a normal like airplane carrier, and a jumbo carrier that's like a car for her. It's like massive. Ironically, I've learned that she doesn't like being in small, tight spaces. So like an airplane carrier or even like the cat backpack, she doesn't really like being in those closed up. But in the big jumbo one, she's like tolerating it. My first week of having Ume was kind of like, it was very tame, more calm than I expected. When I got my little box of 
cat. When I came home, I opened the box for her and she just stayed there the entire time. Like she did not leave her little like cardboard box. So I tried to do everything. I tried to like tempt her with food. I tried to like lure her with toys. Nothing really worked. And eventually I just like let her be and I just did my own thing. When it comes to like the first day of bringing your cat to your home, make a room for your cat so that your cat can claim that room as its own. It's important that your cat can feel safe in a room and feel like they can go to this space to feel comfortable. Have all the things that your cat needs in your room or a bathroom or like an extra space in your place. Just a place for your cat to have some type of familiarity and ownership to it. So I did that with my room. I kind of wanted my space to be also her comfortable space. And at that time, because I had three roommates, it's like a very high traffic apartment. If she wants peace and quiet, it's, it, the only place is my room to be honest. When I got her, I had everything in my room. I had her litter box, her cat tree. I had food, water, toys. Yeah, so I just kind of like left everything so that she can like slowly discover things on her own. And she actually did that when it became nighttime, which is like so funny now that I think about it because she's a stray. So obviously she would be more comfortable kind of walking around at night. I remember when I first saw her leave her box, I was like <gasps> freaking out because at this time I like, settled into bed i was ready to go to sleep and she just like got off her box and she started slowly like walking around like, very slowly and like smelling things and it was so cute to watch i remember staying so still because i didn't want to scare her off and i didn't want to like frighten her because i discovered she's very skittish she's very scared of sudden movements and i actually made some space under my bed for her to hide because I know that technically you're not supposed to like especially like hard places for people to reach for cats to hide just in case there's an emergency but my room was so small there was nowhere else for her to feel like safe and in a dark space so under the bed she goes she just ended up staying under the bed the entire week uh the first few days she didn't really eat and I was really scared but eventually she did she did eat she did drink water and she also used the litter box which i was so happy about once i got her in my room i was like what if she just pees everywhere or what if she just poos in this random spot i would just i would just i would be a little devastated but i'm just glad that she like actually used her litter box as a litter box after the first few days she got comfortable really quickly like i was pleasantly surprised none of my roommates met her yet i just really wanted to make sure that the space was comfortable for her. I think I like sobbed silently when I was lying in my bed and she jumped up to lie down next to me. Oh, I remember that moment so vividly. I wanted to cry. I wish I had a camera on my ceiling to take a photo of the moment or something. I also learned that like Ume is really cuddly and she's very affectionate and she really likes people. And it helped a lot that she was in my room for a certain period of time because when I started introducing her to my roommates and Josh, she felt confident enough to like go to them and smell them and get to know them. And I think what helped a lot was that Ume is extremely food motivated. So if I just gave her a treat or if I gave anybody a treat to give her, she will go to you. She's such a rat. Maintaining a cat is also different from introduction of a cat, right? So what the two most important things that I think every pet owner needs to do is cut their nails and brush their teeth this is the nail cutter i use it's like the top rated one on amazon but i've been using this for a few years this is the toothbrush and the toothpaste i especially like these because the toothbrush is small enough to fit in her mouth and i like the angle of it because it makes reaching the back of her teeth a lot easier for the toothpaste ume really really likes this one because i think she just likes the flavor and that just makes the process of brushing her teeth so much easier and to be honest i uh neglect that a lot because I was scared that I would get her and that I would accidentally hurt her. I should have just like been brave enough to kind of teach her that this is okay. But I think I was just so scared and I 
didn't want to make her hate me i did attempt it like what in terms of like cutting her nails what i would do before is when she would sleep next to me and i hear her snore i would like shakily nervously grab a paw and try to cut a nail like that's how i would literally try to cut her nails and if i did that process it would take like three hours and i was like this is not sustainable and then when it comes to brushing her teeth if i'm scared to cut her nails i'm scared to brush her teeth i'm scared to touch her face so i just like bought a bunch of like replacements for it so i bought a bunch of dental treats water additives powder to put on her food but nothing is better than just directly brushing her teeth and i didn't start doing that until last year and i just kind of like grew some balls and was just like okay i have to do this she needs to learn that this is gonna happen occasionally and it's okay and she will get rewarded that is the important part that she will get rewarded in the beginning it was very hard like she hated it she was yelling at me and Ume is not an attacker at all. She's not the type of cat that will scratch me or bite me or like punch me on purpose. She, everything is like on accident. The last thing she will do is attack. Literally the last of the last things and it's never escalated to that situation. So I have gotten scratches of her trying to like push away from me and her nails are sharp because I'm not cutting them. And I, I could just see like she hates it so much. She's having an awful time. I'm having an awful time. I read a lot that if you're nervous, your cat will feel your nervousness and they will get nervous. And I think it's, it's so true. Like I was so nervous all the time and now i've been doing it daily i've not cutting her nails but i've been cutting her nails very often i brush her teeth on the daily and i think because we're like now in this motion of it it's a lot easier now i just literally pick her up and i just put her down and even though she doesn't like it and she squirms i just hold her tight and i just do it and she just understands that she has to tolerate it no matter what but i think now that i feel confident and i feel like you know like this is good for her i feel at ease she feels more at ease it is me from the future what a stark difference it is with hair and makeup versus no hair and makeup unconscious versus conscious <laughs> i was thinking about this video actually and i remembered some things that i should have mentioned i i forgot a few things about maintaining the health of your cat i mentioned cutting their nails and brushing their teeth but i just remember that there's more like obviously but the first one is brushing it's important to brush their fur out just so that number one it's beneficial for you so that you don't have fur everywhere it also helps the cat not have hairballs so it's always nice to just brush their hair out and ume specifically loves getting brushed so it's pretty easy so i have two brushes the gray one is for just a standard everyday brushing and the other one is for shedding and then another thing is their weight so i'm extremely extremely conscious of ume's weight I want to make sure she's like in a healthy way. When I first got her, she was so skinny. I think she was five pounds. And then I got her. I kept feeding her and feeding her because I also didn't know how much to feed her. So she got uh, very robust like this. Um, she was very round. And every time I picked her up, she had many folds. And that's when I was like, all right, she needs to go on a diet like right now ume is now a healthy seven pounds ume is generally a small cat i think when she was fatter i was aiming for 10 to 12 pound cat because i thought that was normal but her being seven to nine pounds is more realistic and healthier than 10 to 12 so she is within that range now and she looks a lot healthier and a lot more like even i don't know the last thing i want to mention is playtime playtime is so so important and i know i briefly mentioned that ume likes running around on her own even though she likes playing by herself it's still important that you're with your cat while they're playing so even though i'm not very interactive with ume i just kind of like a dog playing fetch i just kind of grab 
a toy if it's out in the open and just toss it when she's in that zoomies mode so that she can just run around more i feel like it's like a bonding time for both of us oh also one thing is to learn your cat's body language that is so key of just really understanding your cat and seeing what your cat needs and wants and this is something you'll figure out over time you know when your cat wants affection when your cat doesn't want affection cats are very clear in terms of what they want and you just need to really just pay attention there's a limit to everything do it in small portions if you're trying to teach your cat something new or trying to make the cat understand that this is a lifelong activity like brushing their teeth or clipping their nails they just kind of need to learn that it's gonna happen and you yourself have to understand the body language of when how, how much can you push before you stop for the day uh, I think that's it now back to the original video. <laughs> Cleaning wise, I don't bathe her, she bathes herself. I'm kind of thinking about starting to teach her bathing after my wedding. I know she's gonna try to like run away and I don't want scars or like scratches on me right now. Litter box, I have a literal box now that cleans itself. Like do a deep clean once a month. Food bowl gets cleaned every day and um, water bowl gets cleaned like either every other week or once a month that is the maintenance of it and it's very simple like it it doesn't have to be complicated but i also think i like lucked out when it comes to ume let me tell you pros and cons about her really quickly i think i seriously like lucked out on cats like i don't think i could get any better than this um okay maybe i can but like i was nervous for a lot of things when i first got cat in general which is constantly throwing up knocking things over biting wires being very aggressive zoomies at like 3 a.m kind of situation uh so there's a lot of things i was like oh wow so many things can go wrong oh also i was afraid of plants being around her i thought she would eat all of them and then just like pass out but she like doesn't care about plants at all. I think it helps that she was a stray because she knows what's good and what's bad for her. So even plants, she knows what's good and what's bad. So she would only eat cat grass, but she won't eat or even bother with anything else. She's curious, she'll smell it, but she won't do anything because she was also a stray cat. She's learned to stay quiet. So she actually never knocks anything over. She actually walks around them and avoids anything so that she doesn't make noise, which is very nice. And honestly, thank God. And I think cause I changed her food system. She doesn't even throw up anymore. Like she used to vomit once every six months, but now I haven't seen her vomit in a really, really long time actually. And then my cons for her is she is the loudest cat on the planet told you when I adopted her like that day when I met her she was meowing a lot and I thought that was cute literally what you see is what you get every morning the girl yells non-stop for an hour her vocal cords are so strong if she was a person she'd be a fantastic singer she would learn a billion languages for how much she talks like she is like above and beyond talking I've done everything everyone has done everything to diffuse it or like teach her to lessen it it nothing works and i really think it's because when she was astray she just learned that meowing equals attention meowing equals food so she does it and i mean she's not wrong how she does it is a little excessive and extremely annoying sometimes so we try to train her that like no matter what i mean how long she yells she's not gonna get food unless an alarm goes off we try to put her in a different room try to ignore her literally nothing works and she only does this for her wet food in the morning and so 
the best routine for us is just to have her wet food be fed in the morning and if she's gonna do this anyways why does we'll use her as an alarm clock even though it's a kind of annoying like it's like at least there's a purpose at least there's a reason you know and then another thing is that she is such a rat again a stray tendency but she loved going on the kitchen counter after like cooking and just smelling it around and stealing whatever she can get when it was just me and her and my roommate she never did this but then once i moved in with my in-laws my mother-in-law is a great cook she cooks amazing food every single day and ume wants a piece of that every single day she like always even though things are covered things are spotless she will still go around smelling things licking things the freaking nerve of this girl luckily she doesn't eat things that's unhealthy actually i don't even know one time she, we had kimchi jjigae no kimchi bokkeumbap which is kimchi fried rice and i saw her with a ball of rice and kimchi and she just like ran off with it crazy and then the next day she pooped out kimchi i oh my god she's fine for now <laughs> i mean we're doing the best we can to make sure she doesn't eat any food but this girl is just so adamant and so sure that we're not gonna feed her that she has to find her own food yeah so overall i would give ume um 10 out of 5 she is beyond perfection i cannot ask for a better cat and i honestly never thought that i would love a cat this much maybe because it's my first like own pet but there's just like this constant affection towards her and love towards her that i really didn't think i would give to a pet but i think it's great that we're like companions we're we have a great and strong bond together i love that she makes me feel better when i look at her i love that she likes me back and i like that we're growing old together i like that we're learning more about each other we're like adjusting life together and I think it's more fun. I think life is more fun when you have a pet. So if you want a cat, highly recommend, but make sure you are financially ready, emotionally ready for a cat. Just don't just get it because I tell you so. Um, just make sure you know you're ready for it and the people that you're living with, if you have, are also okay with it. And just be prepared for any changes. You cannot have the same cat from when you adopted two years later. They're just two different cats because they're constantly adjusting and changing and so are you. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I'm gonna get ready for bed and let Josh go to sleep too. And hopefully I will see you maybe with a cat. Bye.